married, you must have a change of mindset. You are now accountable to another person. There's a difference. Many have not made the transition from singleness to married life. And so they are living married but as, as though single. There is no discipline. Oh, you know, let me say something more. Love unconditionally. Love unconditionally. Because, you know, friends, a lot of young people are getting married, but they don't know what love is. Oh, it feels so good when I touch her. Oh, I can't even eat. <laughs> When I see her, oof, I'm having sleepless nights. One professor at college says, you know, he said, yes, some of these young boys sometimes, you know, man, when, and these, you know, they, you, you, you know, they go to school, you know, and they, they go back to class, you know, and they think about the girls so much. Even when they're, even they're writing, they just see little girls jumping up on, on the paper, you know. It's not your God made us that way, isn't that right? Yes. But you see, and they think that, okay, this feels so good. How can it be wrong? I want to get married tomorrow. And they marry based on feelings. And they thought that that was love. That's not love. That's chemical reaction. Amen. Eh? That's what you call infatuation. Okay? <laughs> that's just the secretion of the dopamine. Right? And the serotonin. Okay? The, the chemicals being secreted in the brain and it makes you feel good. But that's not love. In other words, we have another word for it. Sometimes they call it lust. But I prefer to say infatuation. Can I give you a little definition for love? Can we talking to the young people as well? Is that right? Ellen White here gives a beautiful definition that I like so much when I preserve this quote. She says, listen to this. <clears throat> she says, true love is not a strong, fiery, impetus passion. <laughs> oh, man. You know, because, you know, that's what many interpret as love. Is that right? Oh, well. And even though, man, the, the man is even, pff, they come home to the mother, and the mother says, I don't think he's the right one for you. He says, what? He's the one I dream about. But, 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 he's an ex-con. He's a serial killer. No, but I don't care about that. He's the one I love. That's not love. What you feel, what? Is a strong, fiery, impetus passion. But that's not love. On the contrary, what is love? It is calm and deep in its nature. Watch this now. It looks beyond mere externals. Mm -mm -mm. And is attracted by qualities alone. Hello today. He says, it is wise and discriminating. And its devotion is real and abiding. Mm -mm 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 -mm. There's a lot in that. Oh, we could unpack that. I wrote, I put this quote you know, on my Facebook page. I said, you know, friend, if you, if you plan to have a, uh, some lasting relationship, I'd like you to ponder this statement. And I'd like you to understand the meaning and definition and import of every word and every phrase in it. Study it. Explore it. Watch this. Watch this. It says, it is calm and deep in its nature. It ponders what it sees. It's deep. It's not just a fleeting sense of passion. 
It's not just a superficial expression of excitement. No, it's deep and abiding. It ponders it. Then it says, it looks beyond mere externals. It's not just the car. <laughs> That's good. It's not just the house. That's good. It's not just, it's not just the, 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 the phys physique. That's good. All of those are good. But it's not that. It looks beyond that. And it evaluates. One of the things I normally say even to my singles. I says, what? You evaluate before you engage. There's got to be some thinking. Is that just what you see? I say, oh, I'm ready to go the extra mile. I'm ready to take it to the next level. No. The Bible says, what man is want to build a house and he does not first sit down and put pen to paper and evaluate whether it can stand the test of time. Sometimes young people will make decisions based on emotion. If I were to ask some young man, you know, oh, oh, if you had the choice of a car to buy for a lifetime, what car would you want to buy? You know what some young people would say, oh, well, if I were to ask you, you know, maybe some of you would say, I want to ask the average high schooler, what car would you buy to keep for the rest of your life? Oh, I want a Lamborghini. Woohoo! But are you thinking long term? When you start to have children, where are you going to put the stroller in that little two door car? <laughs> in other words, you have to consider all variables. <laughs> Isn't that right? In the same way, some, when choosing a partner, <laughs> oh, and, and they're dazzled. But you have to think long term. Can they carry on for the long haul? Can they sustain a relationship for the long haul? And for that to happen, the person must possess character. The Bible reminds us. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Amen. Amen. It's more than just the externals. Then he says, it's attracted by qualities alone. Amen. <laughs> by what? Qualities. qualities. That's love. Qualities. So, young people, before you even start a relationship, you, you put pen to paper and say, this is what I'm looking for in a partner. This is what I'm looking for in a partner, okay? First of all, if I'm a Christian, then they must be a Christian too. Is that right? They must serve God too. And why? Because if they don't serve God, then we can't go to church together, we can't pray together, we can't worship together. We can't have conversation where there is a reasonable feedback we we can't be happy in our conversation i go to church and hear a good sermon i god does something for me i have nobody to share it with so you put pen to paper first of all you set boundaries it must be this it must be that and you know, you have what we call negotiable and non-negotiable boundaries. These are some non-negotiable boundaries, okay? If you have this as a boundary, no unequally yoked together with an unbeliever. If you have this as a boundary, you won't get caught. Amen. Amen. For whenever you meet him the first time, hello today, and he said, do you love God? Are you a baptized member of the church? He said, no, but I'm trying. Well, if he, once he says that, you know there will not be a second interview. Amen. For that's a non-negotiable boundary. You evaluate. If you don't do that, 
you can easily be captured and carried away by emotion. Emotion is powerful. You start kissing each other. Wow. You forget everything about all the things you learned in Sabbath school. I only want to see him again. I can't wait. <laughs> what time is it? <laughs> is he coming? <laughs> Emotion is powerful. You set the boundaries. The reason why a lot of young people get caught in teenage pregnancy and all kinds of problems, because they did not set boundaries. They did not hold on to it. <laughs> Hello today. But if we are to do a relationship, we must do it God's way. Yeah. When God made Adam and Eve, man, he set boundaries. Isn't that right? He says, of all the fruits in the garden, you may freely eat or enjoy everything but this one. This one. Why did God have boundary? Is it because he hates us? No. It's because he loves us and he knows if we venture beyond the borders of safety, it is trouble out there. So he sets the fence, the barbed wire to keep us inside. 